What's up you guys? I wanted to open up the conversation of death. It's very uncomfortable, but something that needs to be spoken. Recently, my grandfather passed away and I wanted to use myself as an example and a learning tool for all of you for the questions that you can ask, the memories that you can hold on to, and the ways that we cope. It's very subjective. Take it with a grain of salt and implement it in your life the way that you will. But at some point, we will all have someone that passes away. And I think it's moments like these that remind us to live in the moment and live for the future and live for something better than we are right now. So with that, let's jump into the episode. Comment below anything that might be relevant in your life, similar experiences, or questions that you may have. Welcome back into another episode of the Pearson Fode Show. Pearson, take it away. Fode Fireside Chats, where we get intellectual, deep, and oh, look at that, we have a fire. And uh, we talk about all of our feelings and deep extraterrestrial thoughts. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, okay, so <laughs> now that we've made the intro, uh, I recently had a death in the family and I thought it would be good to, oh wow, this is already like hard to talk about. This is nice. Great. Uh, I thought it would be good to talk about after my family had a chance to recover emotionally. Um, I didn't want to talk about it right away, but I wanted you to ask me questions about what you think people might be interested in knowing about death. Mm -hmm. um, and how we all cope with it. Because yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going through problems like this right now during COVID with a lot of deaths around us and with a lot of people in uncomfortable situations. And I think it's important to talk about. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's a very difficult time right now. I know a lot of funerals aren't even happening. Yeah. And in your case, I guess my first question is, what was it like losing your grandfather during a time like this where you had to have his funeral over FaceTime. It was shit. And how did you deal with that? Because I, I noticed something, and we all, we all deal with death differently. Pearson's grandfather p passed away, and he didn't say anything to me. He didn't say anything to my other friend that was with us. Mm -hmm. And he, he asked me to come over, and we were just ch hanging out all day. We were playing Call of Duty, and... I was like, we were playing for like six hours yeah. and I was like, bro, I got to go. And he's like, no, nah, dude, let's play, play some more. <laughs> and he was like, kept trying to have me stay over there. I didn't realize it at the time, but that was the day that your, your grandfather passed away. Yeah. So you, you didn't tell me it, but in a sense you were coping with it by not thinking about it. Yeah. Why, why do you think that is? Why did you deal with it that way? I, I mean, It was hard to think about because I really didn't know how to bring it up to you guys. It's, it's such an uncomfortable thing to talk about with people in general because you can't just like walk into a conversation and be like, hey, I hope you guys are having a great day. My grandpa just died. Right. Which is, it's fucking just. Well, you feel like you kill the mood essentially. Yeah. You feel like the vibe stealer. Um, didn't pass a vibe check. And most people don't emotionally know how to handle the conversation during that kind of event and so you have to have emotionally mature people around and you don't know how to approach that and I also the reason I wanted you guys to stay over was it was the only thing that was keeping me from kind of losing my shit you mm -hmm. know I was staying motivated I kept working and I could I knew that I would exhaust myself to the point where I could you know just go to sleep at night and finally wake up and trade stocks and keep I would just keep motion until finally the moment hit that <clears throat> that it sucked. Right. What kind of relationship did you have with your grandfather? Like you and him, who, how was he as a person? How was your guys' relationship together? <laughs> this dude was a wild man, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Wilder than you? Wilder than me, man. <laughs> Opinionated, interesting, uh, old geezer, funny as fuck. Also kind of a piece of shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> Just a, an all around great old dude, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I don't know what his life was like. We never really got a chance to talk about that. Actually, something that I'm happy I did was I didn't have my camera, but I had my iPhone and last, literally last Christmas, I went over to their place and I recorded a conversation where I interviewed him and my grandma mm -hmm. and I didn't know that anything was going to happen. Right. I just knew that they were getting up in age and I wanted to have this moment with them where I got to ask him all kinds of questions. 
and I have that footage on my phone now and I'm so glad I did. But, um, he, I mean, I have the funniest memories. Like he was the guy who took me out to eat McDonald's breakfast in the morning and I never got to eat that because my mom yeah, loved organic food. Yeah, he was a cool grandpa. Yeah, he was a cool <laughs> grandpa, you know? But he's also the guy that, like, fucking chased me down the fucking third bay of the shop, screaming at me because I called him an old fart in front of my <laughs> friends and about to hit me with a fucking two-by-four, and I had to sprint, and I barely escaped the 300-pound bowling ball of a man that he was <laughs> sprinting for my life. And I was like, Grandpa, no, don't kill me! And I was terrified, and I was, like, 13, and I finally, like, made it to the door of the house. I slammed the door, and I lock it, and I just hear, bang, 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 bang! And he's screaming out there at the front door, and he's like, open the goddamn door! Open the old piece of shit! And I, I mean, I didn't... My friends were laughing. It was terrifying. <laughs> and my dad comes home, and he's like, because I called my dad right away, and I was like, Dad, I don't know what's going on. Grandpa lost it. Uh, and he comes back, and thankfully my dad came to my defense like a proper homie. You know, dad's yeah. one of the boys. Shout out, dad. Shout out, dad. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, he was, he was that guy. He was just like, just kind of a, a wild card, but like a good grandpa. You mentioned to me previously that he never said, I love you. No. And... You said, I hope you get to see one of my movies or you, I hope you get to come to like a red carpet premiere with me one day. And the last time you saw him and you said, I, I love you. And what did he say? He, uh, you're making me cry. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to make me cry. <clears throat> the fuck that's hard fuck <sighs> mm. the last conversation that I had with my grandpa was uh shit it was good it's really good and uh, I felt like my ask was unreasonable, but I wanted to put it out there anyways. And we were leaving for Christmas, and uh, I shook his hand like we always do. And he's always like, hey, green bean giant, be good. And he shakes your hand really hard and fast, and he's kind of old, and he's got shakes kind of mm -hmm. like me. And... Uh, I said, all right, Grandpa, you too. You old geezer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he goes, all right, I will. And he's like, you keep, you keep making movies, okay? And I was like, all right, I will. And I grab his other hand, and we're shaking like this now. <laughs> and we're just, this is just his thing. He doesn't, he's not very good at affection. I mean, right. my dad and my uncles would be able to attest to that in a very real way but mm. he he's shaking my hands and this is his moment to like be proud of his grandson and i go hey grandpa he goes yeah i was like listen i'm gonna see you again but uh i want you to know you you have to come to my red carpet for the next movie that i do he goes oh yeah that's a good idea i want to do that that'd be great I go, sweet you're coming right he goes yeah i was like all right grandpa i'll see you there he goes good yeah 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 I'll see you there. I go, all right. I love you. He goes, yeah, you too. This <laughs> 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 like, I would say. <laughs> Never seen those words in his life. He's just like deer in a headlights moment. And, uh, and that was, that, that's literally the last thing I ever said to him. And I think that I have one of the rare opportunities of the people that have died in my life um, to for the most part, have said really great things knowing that I get to leave with that moment, which is awesome. Um, which is a lot of times why, like, you know, people think that I'm, like, highly opinionated or uh, really me. I don't know how mm -hmm. else to describe it, but I think it's because I've seen death a lot, and I know that it's short. Life is. 
Mm-hmm. Life is short. What did I say earlier? We have three things in life. We want to <laughs> fuck, eat, and try to not die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and life, life is life is short, shockingly short, and it sucks. What does this tell you about like? Future relationships, for example, you know, you said to your grandpa, you, you know, you hope to have him come to a red carpet one day. What does yeah. this tell you to do for, you know, your relationship with your father, with your mother, mm-hmm. um, with your other grandfather? Does it open your perspective into that? Because I know you have a lot of you butt heads with some people in your family. Yeah. I think for me. It's tough. There's certain things that I know cannot change inside of my family. I'm just specifically talking about my family or specific friends. Mm -hmm. That'll never change. And I have come to terms with the death of that relationship. Like it's a metaphorical death, but in a lot of ways, unless somebody wants to change, they can't. Right. And you, at some point, have to have enough dignity and respect to say, I love you. You need help. We can't do this anymore. And that's in a very real way is it's very similar to saying goodbye to somebody that you care about in a funeral way. It, the pain feels very similar. And I've had some people in my life that have done very awful things um, and said awful things. Yeah, I think... Uh, the metaphorical death has already happened in a lot of ways. And I've come to You've terms with that. Come to terms with it? Yeah. I mean, I've Does it bother you that cer- certain said people in your family don't support you? Does, yeah. that, does that weigh on you? Absolutely. It never w- it, it'll never not weigh on me. I mean, the fact that like I don't have the support from extended family members. Um, some of the shit that they said to me was awful. And then thankfully I had my parents there coming to my defense. Mm-hmm. I mean, even some of the... This is the crazy part. My parents were the ones who some of the things they disagreed with, but they were still coming to my defense over the shit that these other family members were saying. And I was just like, this is insane. Like, but thank God for my parents in this moment because they're being amazing. But these extended family members, the shit that they said, like, I'm going straight to hell. I've been disowned by the family. I can never speak with them again until I repent and move back to Moses Lake and uh, recede my entire life. It was just like the most insane shit. I, yeah, I, I think in those circumstances, it sucks. I wish, I wish that I could have a relationship with them Mm -hmm. and I wish I had another chance to say goodbye and tell them I love them. Right. But I don't know if that's ever going to come. When it comes to your grandfather who passed, Mm -hmm. do you want to share how he, how he passed or no? Yeah, I think that's, that's probably important too. Um, uh, listen, my grandfather was no spring chicken. Uh, he was severely obese <laughs> and his favorite meal was Jack in the box. That was like one of the last meals I ever shared with him outside of Christmas dinner. And, uh, he was on his way to Jack in the box and in Washington at the time that this happened, it was icy out and, you know, he slipped and fell and, uh, broke his neck on a parking pylon that's in the parking lot, nose and neck fractured his neck and uh, was left out in the cold for an unknown amount of time and he developed kind of a hypothermia and and then pneumonia kicked in after that. Um, I don't know if it had anything related to COVID. I'm unsure. He was Mm -hmm. in the ICU. Um, There was exposure to COVID, but for the most part, from what I understand, it all of these scenarios would have taken anybody out regardless. Um, and I don't, I'm pretty sure the autopsy results showed that it was un, not COVID related, but yeah, right. he survived for another uh, week and a half. Um, after that, they took him into the hospital. They operated immediately. <laughs> I mean, I have some pictures of him just being a tough old guy that survived fucking, you know, serving in Germany on the peacekeeping mission. Uh, okay. You could just see him staring into the phone and just being like, yeah, I fucking broke my neck, but I'm going to fucking live <laughs> through this shit. And, uh, yeah. Um, how old was he? Late eighties pushing 90. Yeah. Okay. Um, he, 
yeah, he passed away in his sleep. Just stopped breathing. Uh, I got a text at like 4 a.m. And uh, that was sad. That was the day that you came over. and mm -hmm. <sighs> I wish... I wish I had called him. While he was in the hospital? While I was in the hospital. I had <sighs> direct orders from um, some higher-ups, I should say, not my dad or mom, uh, that were saying, don't call him right now. And I wish I'd just ignored that and called him. Because mm -hmm. he didn't have to answer, and he could have answered if he wanted, or I could have shot him a text. Right. And uh, I didn't. And I think that's a that's the lesson for me in life is like if you get a chance to recognize that somebody's at their end and you have a, a moment to say I love you one more time or to say get some shit off your chest or just to see them. They don't even have to talk. I think, I think you should take it. Do you think that that's more so for you, yourself? Absolutely. You, or for the person? I think it's important like, for is the... Is that a selfish thing I'm saying? I'm trying to get at. Like, yeah. It like is selfish. Is it? Yeah. I wanted that for me. Right. I wanted to tell my grandpa I loved him one more time. Totally selfish. You think that that would have... Would have made, made him happy, though. Would it? Yeah. Yeah. I know he liked it. Right. Even though he didn't know how to respond, I yeah. know he liked it. Uh, you know, it's a... It's like putting on your own life preserver in the middle of a plane, plane wreck. You can save other people because you're surviving. Right. You know, and that's a selfish thing that I just wanted to do, you know. It's interesting to me. Did he? Did you ever talk about, like, for a non-emotional person, you say he wasn't very emotional. So do, do, do you yeah. think moments like, because you say, you know, it, it bothers you that certain said family members don't support you. Mm -hmm. Did he ever express any type of emotion where it's like, you know, oh, I wish, you know, Pearson would reach out more or I wish, mm -hmm. you know, my son, I don't know, you know, I don't know him. Yeah. But did he ever express any sort of emotion like that or was he, you know, just living his life and Yeah, he was like do you ever try to put yourself <laughs> in his shoes in situations like that? I tried to, but mostly I don't think really any of us did too much. Mm -hmm. We just kind of understood. It was kind of like an unspoken thing. Grandpa was just one of those guys who didn't talk much about the past outside of stuff that was like from the history channel. Right. And uh he didn't want to go into detail about his life experiences. And uh, I wish we could have talked to him a little bit more about that stuff, but he never wanted to open up. I interviewed him about it. He didn't want to say shit. I'm sure there's a reason why. I'm sure, like, I, I take for granted all the life that I have and, you know, how easy it's been comparatively for me. You know, I didn't have to, you know, go to a peacekeeping mission at 18 years old in Germany. I don't know what that's like. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so I, I do try to empathize with his position of where he's at, but emotionally he was cut off, but not when it came yeah. to like anger and just blasting right. out. Do you think, I mean, there, there's always that like grumpy old men, you know, yeah, like yeah, grandmas sure. and whatever, you get grumpy when you're older. Cause obviously I've had grandparents and my grandparents were extremely involved in my life. Like mm -hmm. every single baseball game, they were there. Every football game for every single child, yeah. like every grandchild. What was your relationship like with your grandfather, like at a young age, before you like moved out of Moses Lake? Does he live in Moses Lake? Yeah. Like yeah. What was your relationship? Was he an active part of your life where, you know, he'd call the phone and be like, hey, let me talk to Pearson. You know, mm -hmm. was that the type of guy he was or was he more so? No. No? Mm-mm. No, I mean, like, we saw, it was interesting because we lived on a farm, so, like, he came to the farm every day, and he'd swing by and say, what's up? So, I guess maybe the phone thing wasn't, uh, like, a relevant thing in my life in that sense, but he definitely would swing by and, like, try to take the grandkids out to, like, okay, yeah. uh, you know, breakfast. That was that was his thing. He wanted to take us to McDonald's and Jack in the Box and Arby's and all the stuff that we things couldn't Things that get. he liked. Yeah, things <laughs> that he liked. Yeah, and that was, that was his form of affection. Um, it, this is something that I always question because, like, mm -hmm. My grandpa was bigger. My dad's bigger. He's not like obese. Yeah. Were you as a family ever trying to be like, get him in better health? Oh yeah. Bro. Yeah. We talked to him about it all the time. Yeah. He didn't give a fuck. Right. He was just done. He was like, nah, nah I'm going to, 
like I think he'd broken his nose before, and he was like, "If I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out and eating a happy meal. You know, it's it's gonna be like that." <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, "All right." He's come back to the farm in the op- farm office, and he put donuts in the freezer. He liked them frozen. He didn't want it. He was, I was what? like, he just had a very specific style, and he always had like Coca Cola in the back of his pickup, which was just yeah. riddled with trash at all times. And he always had those like hot like uh, car- caramel candies in his pocket that all old people have. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why do they always have that old people, Bro, like, old people, old people caramel? <laughs> uh, like, I don't even know where it comes from. It just comes from the universe somewhere. It's a third or fifth dimension. I think one thing that I wanted to touch on too was, um, you know, I th- a lot of people probably are in a similar position where they don't get to see their grandparents or their parents or anybody affected by the, the pandemic that's happening right now. And if they do pass away, what are the consequences? I had to sit through uh, a funeral on an iPhone and it sucked mm-hmm. and it wasn't cool. I, you know, it was, it was really cool for me to see how the family kind of came together in that moment, even though we we're physically separated, but we all like FaceTimed in. And if this was a Spanish flu years ago, I never would have been able to do that. Right. Technology you know? brought you the ability to, to be close. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people going through similar things like that where you have to look at a loved one through a glass wall. You have to, yeah, you know, view them through a, an iPhone screen. My grandma, from the pressure of all this, she had a stroke. Yeah. You know? And I, my dad and I sat on the phone with her for an hour and she couldn't barely get words out of her mouth. And I think, Fucking, you know, my uncle too, he, he got pneumonia from this. Like there was just yeah. like, it was one thing after the other, all within the same week. And I was just, pff, I was in a bad place. Right. Um, and I think it's, it's hard for us to not be able to touch the person. And it's hard to not be able to like, want to give you a hug or to like embrace for some sort, because humans, we just, we just need that contact right. on some level. And if you can, if you're not social distancing from that person, if you if you're not keeping that space, if that's your your safe spot, give them a hug. You know, get into a get into therapy. By the way, for the love of God, you know, if 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 you've never dealt with death before, if you if you're on the cusp of it, if you have dealt with it before, I don't care. Get in fucking therapy. Talk about it with somebody that's yeah. a professional. That's it's interesting. The death is a very people handled it very very differently. Yeah. Um. My grandfather died. My dad, he was more of the like, I think you push it off type guy, like mm-hmm. denial. Yeah. Um, but it was actually interesting now that you brought it up. The funeral, my brother, who never in his life has ever showed any emotion, mm-hmm. he couldn't go. Mm. Also, my grandma had Alzheimer's, and he did. They just didn't want to visit her because they didn't want to remember her mm. as a vegetable. You yeah. know. I can't really understand that. We all deal with like death differently. Do you think the way that your family, do you think that the way that your family life and your upbringing is, is the reason you don't want kids in marriage? Why, why do you not want to have kids and have marriage? Why is that not part of your plan? Because it's a part of, 99.9% 99.9% of yeah life. <laughs> I I don't know, man. I I think the reason I don't want to get married and have kids is I I, I I think I've seen it consistently across the board. And I don't think necessarily my f- parents did this. Um but a lot of people give up on their dreams, on their goals. Settle. Yeah there's a lot of settling that happens inside of you a think relationship. Getting and married and having a kid voids your dream. No, I just think people are terrible at doing that stuff. And so it's, it's like uh, most people would rather settle and feel comfortable with their significant other than feel uncomfortable and push through that discomfort stage in order to achieve the goal and the dream that they set out with. So what ends up happening is inside of that relationship, they build up resentment to the other person, to that significant other. Yeah, for them holding them back. And 
they blame them and then they blame the kids and yeah. then somebody else gets blamed and another person gets blamed. It's like, I have nobody to blame but myself for not achieving my dreams right now. And hopefully I find somebody on that journey that is the same mentality as me and wants to achieve those things with me and pushes me harder than I've been going right now. So you would be open to meeting someone that basically also has a dream, like a Jada yeah. Pinkett Will Smith type. Totally. Yeah. I You'd mean, be if, down for that. If that happens, awesome. But I'm not, I'm not fucking holding my breath about it. And when you say you don't want to be married and have kids, do you, is that a lonely road for you? Or are you like, is that a, like a player life? Like <laughs> fucking bitches getting money. <laughs> 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 uh, I mean, I've, I get lonely, yeah, but I've never like, you know, I've 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 left all of my family and friends behind to go live on a floor and in my car, so I've been lonely, you know. I never I when I first moved to L.A. I lived in my car and on a couch and on a floor, and was what I call functionally homeless. Like I was mm -hmm. searching for jobs and I was trying to pay pay pay, pay rent and make money, um, and I I had nothing. I had no one outside of the people that I'd occasionally meet and be like, do you want to hang out? Let's fucking hang out. I don't know who you are. You look right. like homeless Bob from the street. Bro, Let's you're very like that too. When yeah. you meet people, you're, you're down to always like spend time with new people. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Do you, do you lose friendships? Do you, we've never really dove in this far. You always deal with my emotions. Yeah. Now <laughs> it's time for me to deal with yours. Uh, like, like what is, what is a day like in Pearson's life if I don't hit you up to hang and you know, you're just, what's it like? It's great. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, uh, but, but are there moments, like you said in the podcast yeah. that you have days you don't want to get out of bed? Yeah. What is that day like for you? Days that you don't want to get out of bed is, is just filled with depression and anxiety and wanting to w walk in front of moving traffic. Is that, is that, Based on the fact that you have nothing to do that day, you have no purpose. Oh no! Not or at all. like you could have a, ha, could you wake up on the morning, and have a huge audition and still feel depressed? Absolutely. And you wouldn't be motivated for that audition. Yeah, it's happened multiple times. I mean, I I have developed coping mechanisms via my therapist, via me, via people around me that help me deal with those those feelings of like not wanting to wake up. But I have to remind myself when I'm in those situations that like you fucking moved out here for a reason. Mm -hmm. Get your fucking ass out of bed. Quit right. being a loser. <laughs> Literally, I have to tell myself yeah. that. I mean, each person their own. This is my coping mechanism. You don't I'm not telling you anybody to do this, but I have to tell myself quit being a loser and quit moping. Because that's what it feels like. It feels like I'm moping and I'm like, I don't have any good reason to be upset. Like I'm still alive. I don't live in my car anymore. I fucking pay my rent. I pay my friends bills. I like I can do a lot. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, like, something that helps me is, I, I this sounds morbid as fuck, but I, I just tell myself, you know what, one day you're going to die. And that's like, suddenly it's like something clicks in my brain, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right, it doesn't matter, it's not a big deal. Go fucking do it. So, we all say that, right? The only two things guaranteed in life are taxes and death. Yeah. So, why when someone dies, why does it hit us so hard when we know that it's inevitable. That person's time is coming. Your time is coming. I have been asking myself that question since I was born. And I still don't have an answer. I think it's because death itself is, it's, it's like the ultimate unknown. We can, we can sit here and we can talk about it and it can feel interesting at times. And we're like, oh yeah, we can contemplate like, maybe there's God afterwards. Maybe there's heaven. Maybe there's hell. Maybe there's fucking paradise. Maybe there's some sort of euphoric place that we can all go to. It's cloud nine. Who knows? Mm. I don't fucking know. I can't prove it. Nobody's come back to tell me. And a lot of people that say they've come back from death, I don't know. They didn't bring me pictures or a video. How yeah, you're very tangible based, like prove it. Yeah. If you listen, we've all got opinions. Why is the religion from 10,000 years ago dead? And why is our religion from 2000 years ago alive? Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, egg, I'm, I'm like fully in this vein of, I don't know. And neither do you. And right. until somebody can physically prove it, I don't know. And I think that's why death is scary is because ultimately nobody does know. If we knew for a fact that I would see my grandpa up in heaven. Mm hmm. You would be chilling. I'd be like, fuck, dude. I'll see you in a minute. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Right. 
but we don't. It's over. To you. To me. It's as far over. as you know. As far as I know, yeah. I have not talked to any of my friends that have died. I have not talked to the guy that jumped off of a skyscraper and landed next to me. Yeah. I haven't talked to my grandpa. Right. I talked to him, but... He doesn't respond. Nobody's responding to me. Yeah, I do the same thing. Yeah. I, I pray to my grandma. Yeah. And I hope she's not watching all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? It's like a Zoom call that never ends. Yeah, right? Like, I hope she ain't watching when I'm fucking closing that bedroom door. <laughs> Dude. Um, do you think that it's better to be prepared for death in a situation where it's like... Would you, would you rather, you know, your grandfather's scenario, mm -hmm. you know, had an accident yeah. and in the hospital gets pneumonia yeah. a little bit more prepared than, Hey, so-and-so got in a car accident. They're not going to make it. Right. How do you think, have you dealt with either of those scenarios? Both yeah, of those scenarios? Both of them. What do you think is easier? If neither are, then there's no answer, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know why everybody always in my life seems to pass away in the morning. I, I, I literally wake up and it's, I get a text. Mm. The guy that jumped off of a skyscraper was at 10 AM. It's fucking nuts. It was in Vegas and like that shit happened in the morning. And then my friend Taylor Watts who passed away, it was, I got a text at fucking 6 AM and I had 30 missed calls. Uh, it, some of these things, they just happen instantly. My grandpa, I had time, right. you know, and each time it happens, there's always something you wish you would have done or wish you would have said. You can't, can't worry about that. Can't. It there's is nothing, what it yeah, is. It's done. Yeah. That chapter is literally closed. Um, I wish... Hindsight is so fucking twenty twenty. Right. You know, there are things you always wish you would have done, but it's irrelevant. You know, so in those opportunities that you do have a friendship that has elapsed and it has gone south, or you do have a family member that has gone south, any kind of relationship that has ended poorly, I do my best to close it up. Even if it's not on terms that they're comfortable with, that it's on terms that at least in my head, I know where this can go. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, if I was to never see you or speak to you again, I'm comfortable with this outcome. But I think about that a lot, which is probably why I am the way I am. But I think about death fairly often. I don't. Really? No. See, I'm a strategizer. I always think about it. I think like, uh, probably because it's been so relevant in my life and it's, left me with wounds right and mm. but i mean you've definitely had people that you've that have passed away in your life mm -hmm. and maybe it's forced you into your own way like what does that look like for you i mean i lost my grandparents at like 14 and 16 two of them and then my grandmother a few years ago but as we, as bad as it sounds my grandmother had alzheimer's and, you know, to us, she was suffering for many years. Like mm -hmm. she had, she didn't know who I was for like seven years. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, that was like a prepared thing where it's like, damn, she can't eat. She can't walk. She doesn't know what's going on. She's purely just breathing. Heart's yeah. beating. She's not living. And, you know, I think I could speak for my family. I, I mean, I don't know if I can, but we wanted her to pass away in the sense of like she was suffering and she was purely just like, she literally didn't know what was going on. She was a baby. Yeah. But, but you're not going to grow up, you know? Yeah. So not that we obviously we didn't want her to pass away. Right. That's not what I meant, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. we wanted her to stop suffering. So I think that I handled that one way easier mm -hmm. because it was like, okay, now she's at peace. Yeah think when I get phone call, I've, I've never had someone close to me pass away and I get a phone call like close, close to me and I'm like, Hey, like, and I get the news, but whenever I do get news of like someone that I know, yeah, it's just like a, I can't believe it type thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's denial and shock. Yeah. Like there's no way like yeah. that's the, no, that's like, you don't believe it, you totally. know? 
And that's the weird one. I've never lost someone so close to me, like, here today, gone tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But I've, that's just the way that I've felt with, like, friends who, like, people in my school have passed away. Yeah. And I wasn't close with, them. like, she passed away in a car accident. And so I think one other person passed away from, like, a heroin overdose. Mm-hmm. Wasn't close with them, but I knew who they were. Yeah. But it's just, like, one of those things where it's like, damn, that's so crazy. Yeah. Like, I hung out with you in, in high school. Mm-hmm. And now you're gone. Totally. It's a weird thing. What do you, I mean, like, how do you, how do you think, like, people in those situations, like, like yourself, how would you respond to them and tell you back then, like, what what would you say to prepare for? Like, what was, what's your best advice to somebody in that situation? I think you just got to experience it. I don't think you get prepared for death. You just mm-hmm. have to experience it. And yeah. it, like your heart's heavy. Yeah. That's like the only description. It's like, you know, when you're crying so hard that it's like hard to swallow. Yeah. I feel like that's like a constant feeling. Totally. And you do get in, you get in your modes where you think about them. Like when my grandmother passed, I used to think about good memories and you start to cry. Mm-hmm. But that's why, like, I think that's changed me. Who I am now is like, and that's why I love filming my life and filming my parents. Mm-hmm. And so when my parents are gone, I have these memories and like, you know, I don't know. They, they definitely inspire me to be a good, my grandma inspires me to good, be a good grand grandpa. And my parents inspire me to be good parents mm-hmm. just based on the reason I haven't is because I know once I have a kid that my life's over. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Until they get out of the house like me. Like my parents are living life right now. You know, they're fucking right. retired. All the kids are out of the house. Their grandparents, like yeah. no Their son buys them a motorcycle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Their son's crushing it out in LA. <laughs> um, but they're living life again, finally. But like, you know, you put your life on pause when you have kids, mm-hmm. but they did a damn good job. And, you know, I don't really have any complaints about how I was raised. Like I, I'm fortunate to say that because I know that pisses a lot of people off. Like, oh, mm-hmm. like I... I've had people say, oh, it must be nice, like, having a fucking perfect life. Like, but, yeah. like, I'm sorry. They, like, why are you mad at me that my life was great, you know? Yeah, totally. <laughs> I didn't choose to have, like, it, 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 I just was born yeah. into a good family. You know, that's a fortunate thing. Totally. Sorry. <laughs> like, yeah. Which, you know, and, and obviously a lot of people aren't born into that type of situation, but I think it's cool to, like, if you're in a in a bad family situation and you don't like your situation, mm-hmm. be the one that changes that. Yep. You know, like Good. if you have, like don't be a spitting image of your father if you don't look up to your father. Yeah. You know, don't be a spitting image of your mom if you don't look up to your mom. And yeah. they do rub off on you. Totally. But you need to acknowledge like, damn, like I hate this about my mom. She's manipulative. Right. You should acknowledge, I don't want to do what she's doing. I think the reason that I never... I never got in trouble. I never made any mistakes. I always got good grades. It's because I watched, I watched my brothers and sisters fuck up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, don't do that because mom and dad are going to yell at you. Don't do that because you're going to get arrested. Don't do that because you're going to fucking, like there's stuff my brother's done. It's like, all right, yeah, definitely don't do that. Like, you know, like I learned from my brothers, which is, it's a good thing. And I'm the baby. So like Mm -hmm. I was treated the best, but. Also, but just really, you were just learning. But li- yeah, literally, I was always learning on my own. I didn't, my parents didn't have to teach me much. Like, my brothers yeah. and sisters taught me a lot. A lot. Yeah. You know? I have a question for Adelia. Yes. You said earlier that you haven't had anyone pass away in your life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How, does, how does this conversation feel to you? Is this something that you've thought about before? Um, yeah. I just I I don't know what you you go through. I I wish I can relate. Mm-hmm. Um, like family wise, I haven't had any one close pass mm-hmm. away. But like when you were saying about like fa- uh, friends, like in high school, I, I had one pass away, mm-hmm. um, two years ago, and I lost it. Mm-hmm. Even though we weren't close, we were slightly close for like a little bit of time. Enough time to enough time, yeah. Feel something when mm-hmm. they pass away, and the chapter closes. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And even like 
that happening and me losing it, Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine losing someone that is like hella close to me. And I don't know what I would do. I literally don't know. Yeah. I, time, and I don't want it to happen. Time definitely heals all wounds. And yeah. it's also about perspective too, right? In the moment we lose something and it is kind of like a selfish thing. Yeah. We lo- we're mad that they're gone yeah. for our feelings, you yeah. know. We don't know what the afterlife is like. Mm-hmm. But that like <coughs> like I can look back on my grandparents and I don't cry. I like I'm like I remember all the good ass times, you know? Mm-hmm. Like it's dope. Like I don't I miss it for sure. I wish they were here to see what I've done with Mm -hmm. my life because they didn't see any of it. But I'm super thankful for like the time that we did share. Yeah. And I think that you celebrate life. I I do at least. I don't really like, I'm not like a much of a dweller, I guess. Yeah. Here's, okay. I want to wrap it up with this. What is, what does their memory do for you? And how is their death going to affect your life from here on out? What are you going to allow that to do for you? Their memory is a is a example of who I want to be as a mm-hmm. as a grandfather as a parent, mm-hmm. always being there for my family. Yeah, no matter what, I couldn't imagine like abandoning a kid or mm-hmm. like just. I mean, I feel I, I know that that's what my brother feels too about me coming out here to L.A. is like I abandoned my family. Yeah, so I see it now that we've had this conversation why yeah. he would be upset, but I also see like that that's a selfish thing. Cause it's like, he wants me there. Right. Um, and I don't know what my future holds, but definitely, uh, just live my life being happy every day. Like I never saw my grandparents ever bat down. I yeah. just loved like life. Mm-hmm. My grandma said the rosary every day. She was just happy to see us all the time. Like never in a bad mood. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's why like I, up until like being an adult, yeah. like and having real world problems, I was never in a bad mood ever. Yeah. Like life's been chilling until I like got to pay bills and make right. money and all this stuff. Yeah. So money is the root of all evil. <laughs> <laughs> Adelia, I know you haven't had anybody pass away yet, but you did have that one person. What's something that you go forward in life carrying with you because of that? Just thinking that life is damn short. Yeah. Because, like, when that happened, I was like, she literally just liked my Instagram photo the other day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, we were DMing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. So, I was like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, life can just... And short. yeah, Dude, to touch on the life is short. Like as growing up in, in middle school, you're like, God, I just want to go to high school. And then you yeah. get to high school and you're like, fuck, I just want to go to college. And then you get to college. You're like, I just want to go in the real world, yeah. bro. Once you get in the real world, my parents weren't lying when they said life fucking goes by fast. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's no sense of time. Yeah. Like it's, you don't have anything to look for. Like no offense. You there's, got nothing to look no forward fucking to. There's no calendar. It just stops Yeah. There's existing. no calendar. Time, like you got time is so relative. Right. You got a fucking, you have real problems. Like if you have fucking problems in college, you ain't got shit until you're on your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yep. literally on your own. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Life changes in a drastic way and suddenly it's Groundhog's Day and everything's fucking strange. And you don't understand it when your parents say that either. No. You're like, what do you mean life gets shorter or time yeah. gets shorter? It's fucking all, there's 24 hours in a day. Yeah. It hasn't <laughs> changed maybe by a, a fraction Bro, of a second. My, there's no weeks to me. There's no days to me. There's no months nope. to me. Like, it's fucking May already, bro. Yeah. It's still January 1st in my head. Exactly. <laughs> it was, I just celebrated the new year. Dude. I think, I, and this is what where I want to end it. I want to say, you know, with each person that passes away in my life, it's a reminder every time that life is short. Yeah. That their memory does drive us forward. That my dreams will at some point impact my lineage beyond me. You know, me achieving my dreams, I now can do it with the reminder that they had dreams too and theirs weren't achieved. Mm -hmm. And in honor of them, I can go out and chase mine to the day I die. I can do the things that I know made them happy that I was doing. I can go out every fucking day and I can work my ass off and remember that these are things that we all celebrated together. I think that's an important part of life that you have to utilize the sadness and their death to inspire your future. 
because otherwise that can hold you back and that'll mm-hmm. that'll end your dreams that'll end your goals but i don't think they would want that for us right i don't think the people that really care about you when they pass away they want you to to do exactly that they want you to go out and fucking chase they're sitting there on the, on their deathbed they go uh, literally it's it's this it's go fucking go do it go chase your dreams go live your life this is good for you go out and you know? do all the things that you couldn't fucking do that i can't fucking do and do it cuz you're going to die you're <laughs> going to die and that's the most like, encouraging thing to me in my life yeah when it comes down to it if you if you fucking hate your job go go, go get a job you like go get a job you like it doesn't cost like, you that much to quit yeah it's a risk for sure but yeah. like when you're 85 you're going to be like oh fuck man Fucking kept my job at McDonald's and it was worth it. I became the manager and I always wanted to be a vlogger or yeah. I became a fucking, yeah, now I manage the Macy's or now I'm, I'm here yeah. at the paper mill. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your job is. If you hate it, get the one that you've always wanted. Take a minor pay cut. Maybe you get a huge pay jump, Yeah, but take the risk, jump into the risk and do it. Jump into the risk and do it. All right, guys. Love you. Mark, thanks for doing this. I appreciate that. Yeah. I didn't want to, I wanted to ask pushy questions, but. You can ask him still if you want. No, no, I, I didn't, I don't know, it's such a, t- it's such a tiptoey topic. Yeah, I think it's important. Because I don't want to be insensitive. No. You know, but I want to ask the questions, I guess, that we all have. Yeah. Because we never, I, I never think about death. It doesn't cross my mind. No. I mean, you said you do. I like, I don't wake up and ever have a conversation like this. Yeah. It, or think about it. <laughs> it's a weird thing to think about. I think it's. Probably why it's so heavy. Is there anything that you wanted to ask that you didn't ask? No, I no. can't. I, I kind of asked it all. I would. I think uh, the reason I don't think about it is because it's gonna happen. So like, what's the point? Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, some people. I think that's good. That's a good coping mechanism. Some people don't need to think about it. Yeah. That keeps you motivated. Me, I think about it, and it keeps me reminded that I shouldn't take it so seriously. Right. hundred years from now, nobody's going to give a flying th- the fuck. The one question I have about death mm-hmm. is why do people care so much? Here's my question. When O.J. Simpson dies, is he going to admit that he did it? Or does he care <laughs> too much about his legacy? Like, if you're on your deathbed, right, and you've right. done some heinous crime, yeah. why not fucking get it off your chest? Yeah. Hey, I killed her. Thank you. Now the whole world knows. Right. But if you take that shit to your grave, that's fucked up. Because you got nothing. You're dead. Why does it matter about your legacy? You're dead. That's what I want to know. I want to know the same shit, bro. <laughs> so, OJ, if you're listening, just on your deathbed, just, just let us know. 100% clarity on a fucking lie detector. Let's go. <laughs> also, anybody that knows about aliens, lie detector, deathbed, let's go. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. And on that, we're out.